Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah. Today is a very special unboxing because they're in English. Books in English. This is the result of your requests. We just hit 25K on the Majid Riba channel. So this is a special thank you to all our viewers and all the supporters and everybody else who's been spreading the knowledge by sharing the videos. You always said, hey, you unbox these Arabic books. Are they in English? Are they in English? Where can I get them in English? I don't personally like reading in English. I don't like reading in Urdu or Pashto or Farsi or any other language but Arabic. Because to me, it, 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 it cripples a student of knowledge when they don't go to the asal, to the original language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in Arabic. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiya, right? So that is, the, that is what Allah chose to reveal the Quran in. The ahadith were recorded in Arabic. All the original books were in Arabic. So as tulab ilm, we should always learn Arabic. Many madaris around the world, they don't focus on it. They, they do a couple of years of Arabic and then they're into Farsi or Urdu or English. And then the people that graduate from there, they're weak in being able to research and so on. So I made a rule for myself, stick to the Arabic. But there is benefit to get books in English for those that are not student of knowledge at that level where they're fluent in Arabic. Or even if you are, maybe you just want to reference, maybe you, want, you, you can think of the word, uh, you studied in Arabic, but now you got to teach it to an English speaking audience. How are you going to translate it? What's the best translation? So there is a benefit in it. One of our dear brothers, Taymur, he showed me a few books that have been translated that I didn't know had been translated. And may Allah reward him. He sent them to me. Now, what's cool today is I'm not really sure what all is in here. So me and you are going to find out together. Inshallah. Yallah bismillah. Wait, seriously? What am I, Rambo here? Okay, so let's do this. Bismillah. Don't want to make zabha of my books. I want to make sure we just... Uh, Open the box. Bismillah. Alright. Alright. Ooh. Allahu Akbar. Let's see what we got. Well packaged, mashallah. Very well packaged. Ooh. Alright. What's in here? I do know one of the books that's in here, and it's a really great book. I have it in Arabic already. I'm really amazed that it's in English now. But a lot of other books, I'm not even sure what's in here. So let's be surprised together. I always feel bad because somebody like took so much trouble to package it, and I'm just ripping through it. But got to get to the books. All right. So, the first book that I'm going to take out is the book that I was expecting, that I knew would be in here. And this is an introduction to the Hanbali Madhab by a great scholar. Um, he is a classic scholar in the sense that he, he's not contemporary, but he's not long, I mean, he's not like from centuries ago. He died in 1346, if you look at the... Miladi calendar, or I mean the Hijri calendar, which is 1927, according to Miladi calendar, a Sheikh Abdul Qadir ibn Badran al Damishki al Hanbali. Ibn Badran is one of those very classic cases where he was a great scholar to begin with. He was uh, a Shafi'i in fiqh and he had trained to the Ashari uh, Aqidah. And upon his research, he went to the Athari Aqidah. He went to the uh, Aqidah of sticking to the to the Athar, to the narrations and uh, in continuing his research he switched to the Hanbali Madhab and became proficient in it and he wrote this book. Now I, I have had this book in Arabic and I'll show it to you in Arabic as well inshallah this is it in Arabic and as you can tell from the stickies and things I have benefited a lot from it it's a very deep book I mean it's one volume but it's actually really, really deep. It has uh, everything about the Hanbali Madhab, its development, its major books, its students. And he did it in an amazingly concise manner. Now, it's not only an intro book. I mean, you need to have some background to be able to get to this level. The best print in Arabic, Moses al-Risala with the tahqiq of Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Mosul in the Turkey, a muhaqqiq that you have to love. Now, but I don't want to take too much Arabic. Let's get to the English stuff. So, it has been translated. Allahu Akbar. I mean, a very 
uh, unique book. I don't know how good the translation is. I have not read it. Uh, the brother just showed me a picture of it and I was like, Psh, I want it. Um, so I'll have to read it and get back to you on how well it was translated. But if you are interested uh, in the Hanbali Madhab, and not just if you are Hanbali, even if you're just interested in the Madhab and its books and scholars, and even if you follow a different Madhab or you don't follow Madhab, we just want to know about it. It's a treasure and it's in English now. So if you can get it, get it. Uh, it was printed by Darul Arqam. Uh, I don't know the publishing house well. And again, the print looks very clear. Um, looks like they have kept the Arabic in there, which is, wow, mashallah. That's, uh, I don't know if you can see it well here. But um, they've kept the Arabic and the English, which is really cool because, you know, then you can even improve your Arabic with it. Like you can read the Arabic and then read the English translation. Make sure that you're comprehending the Arabic. And make sure you're getting the message that you should be. Um, if you're reading the English and then you're like, I wonder what that was in Arabic. Instead of trying to match it up, you have it all here. Pretty thick. It's not very heavy, alhamdulillah. So, you know, that's good. Um, you know, I, I would say just buy it. Just if you can get it, get it. Uh, it'll be a fun read. But we're not done. Allahu Akbar. We got more. This book. Again, I am shocked that this has been translated. But I'm super excited it has. It's Sharf Ashab al Hadith, the uh, Sharf, the honor or the eminence of the people who stick to the Hadith. And this is very classic. This is not something new. This is Al Khatib al Baghdadi, who died in 463 Hijri. Um, that would be 1071 Miladi. This is one of those books that I really, really enjoyed in Arabic. And, and I got it in Arabic and I gave it to somebody because I'm actually waiting for a new tahqiq that's supposed to come out that uh, one of the shiukh in Kuwait had told me about. Uh, but I had it in Arabic. So now I saw it in English. And same, uh, Darul Arqam has translated it in the same manner. They have kept the Arabic and the English. Some of the quotes about the honor and the traveling and the sacrifices and the praise of the people of hadith that we hear are, 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 are in here that I found very unique. One of the beautiful things that I love about this book, it actually gives the full sanad with the quotes. So even if it's a quote of a scholar, it actually has the chain of narrators with it. Amazing, right? And and people talk about Ahlul Hadith or Ashab al Hadith, some new group or something. This is a scholar from 400 Hijri. And he's the one that wrote this book about the sharf, the, the eminence of the people of hadith, of the people who stick to the narration, who are strong on the sunnah. Beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, this is a book that even a beginning student of knowledge can benefit from because it's quotes after quotes uh, of beneficial knowledge uh, with the chains. Again, if you don't know about the authenticity and weakness of them, I would refer to the people of knowledge, but great book. Still not done. Allahu Akbar. A classic work. I did not know this was in here, but this is a classic work. I also have this in Arabic uh, under my section of those madahib that are no longer existent. And this is a critique of the ruling of a taqlid by Imam al-Shawkani. If you don't know al-Shawkani, amazing scholar, used to be a rafada, used to be Shi'i. And alhamdulillah, upon his research, he left that misguidance and came to the Sunnah and came to Islam. And when he came to Islam, he was already very knowledgeable. So he decided to look into the issue of taqid and madahib and things. Uh, his famous book, Nail al Authar, it's in the library up there uh, in a section, which is actually a sharh of Muntah al Akbar of Majduddin ibn Taymiyyah, not Taqiyuddin, but Majduddin. So he wrote a little risala, and I had this in Arabic, uh, and they've translated again, they've kept the Arabic and the English, excellent. And he criticizes, I would say, the misuse of taqid. Uh, when you go against evidences and things, but very interesting read. Um, good thing if you're interested in that development. Tayyib. Now we have another really good uh, English book, which I had in Arabic. Uh, of course, a lot of people have it. And that is the explanation and commentary that has been collected about uh, the book Sh uh, Shumal Muhammadiyah. Shumal Muhammadiyah, uh, which is also commonly known as Shumal al-Tirmidhi, is a section out of Jamia al-Tirmidhi that has to deal with the Prophet Sallallahu Everything about him, how he looked, how he ate, how he drank, how he dressed, 
everything about the Prophet ﷺ.